what would Jesus say with money? They all go back to the parable of the young, rich, young ruler. And that's, everyone thinks that's what he'll say. And so of course, if that's what you think Jesus is going to say, then you're not going to involve him. So you have to walk away from Jesus and then bear this full, heavy financial responsibility, which creates this incredible anxiety. You know, I think of the the widow that gave everything to the temple. Yeah. Right in Mark well. 12. Yeah. Why is that important to a believer? If you look at all the different scriptures involving generosity and giving, particularly in the New Testament, every single story is different. So uh, so you have the, you know, Zacchaeus um, and the tax collector, and he just sees Jesus and is like, I'll give half, you know, and then and then you have the widow and she brought you know, her, her last, uh, amount of money and Jesus, he, he gathers his disciples around and says, look at this, this is amazing. Uh, and then you have, you know, other situations, acts, you have all sorts of different stories of what people did, you know, whether they sold their land or whether they, you know, and, and there's no prescription, uh, Lydia, they say, you know, she supported the disciples, but she didn't get rid of her business. You know, she didn't sell everything and she was praised, you know? Um, so, it's important. I think Jesus loves faith, but everyone's faith is different. Um, everyone's journey is different. And the the main thing to recognize is what Paul says, which is you need to ex- seek to excel in the grace of giving. So for you to excel is going to look different than for someone else to excel. You know, a widow in, in Jewish Israel culture during the Roman period in that moment with the temple, that was a very unique situation. Whereas, uh, you know, the acts during the persecuted church time. And then now, you know, in 2024, what Paul's like, this isn't a commandment. This is just benefits you. So because you get to engage the grace, the gospel over and over through giving, because we're being given so much, then what do we do? Like, uh, what would it look like for you to step into giving? Because that's who you are. That's who Christ is. And so now that's who you are. And uh, so, yeah, so it's important for a Christian because it's who we are. And so if you're not giving and excelling in it and seeking and seeing it as grace and joyfully doing it, then you're basically like, um, you know, doing something that's not you, you know, you're, if you're not a morning person, you shouldn't try it to wake up early. If you're not, you know, like if you're not a extrovert, you shouldn't be around people nonstop. And since we're all givers, we should be giving, like, it's just kind of naturally who we are in Christ. Mm-hmm. So can you name like the principles of giving then? Be receiving and then acting in response to that. Don't, don't just, uh, give because someone else is giving or give because you're worried about being okay. It's not the cross plus something else, you know, it's Jesus and you're done. And the second thing I'd say about giving is to find the way that you you give joyfully. Um, too often people have uh, little imagination about generosity and they think giving is just um, a percentage of their income. Uh, but there's so many ways of giving. And uh, my book in chapter uh, three is the uh, eight systems of giving. So there's a lot of different ways that you can give. One really fun way of giving is uh, is a giving circle where you come together with people who are uh, who you naturally meet with, let's say a Bible study or your neighborhood um, or your neighbors or your family, and you pool the money together that you're giving, and then you all give towards one place, and then you collectively engage that place, you know, so a Bible translation or a pregnancy clinic or an orphanage or whatever. And then you, you spend your time, your talents, your treasure all in that. And so it becomes, uh, giving should be kind of, you don't do it, shouldn't do it alone. You know, you should do it with people. And so that, that, that would, I imagine just like kindle an incredible enjoy in the giving versus just kind of like sending out checks and not knowing anything about what's going on. That is such a great idea. That is like the best idea I've heard in a long time. Just <laughs> getting people together and doing something, even if you're playing like, you know, gin or whatever, whoever wins, you just throw it all in and then you just, you give yeah. the money to, you know, to a charity or wherever you want to give it to and, and you get people together where you just get together for a Bible study, you know, yeah. for an hour and you're throwing your money in. I mean, it's, it's just such a great, th- what a great idea. 
Um, and, and a donor advised fund would facilitate that really well because then you wouldn't have to be um, having uh, some unmanaged cash. And mm-hmm. so the donor advised fund, the, the book talks about it in the appendix, um, but it's just like this account that you open up and then you just send money from your bank account. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a charitable deduction. So it, it, you can manage it with your giving. Uh, but once it gets put into this place, then it gets invested or it gets sent out to a 501c3. Um, but it's like a way everyone could kind of pool their money together and it creates like a little mini foundation, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you get a good amount of money in there. And, uh, and so, yeah, so it's a, it's a, I would say like that would be a good way for someone to manage um, a, uh, a giving circle. It would be through what they call a DAF or a donor advice fund. Yeah. So what, what Shane's talking about is this whole heart uh, finances that he wrote. And uh, we'll talk about that and how you can get that book at the end. So I'm hoping everybody will stay right to the end. Shane, I know I have a lot of people on here that, you know, might be on the tightest budget. And they, even though they want to give um, that great idea about getting together, getting people together and then, you know, accumulating the money there and 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 donating it, that is amazing. But, um, you know, what if people don't do that? You know, is there, you know, and they feel guilty because they want to give, but they don't have the finances, especially people maybe that are retired or or coming up on retirement, they're like, you know, I've been giving my whole life a lot of money, and then all of a sudden now things are changing. What does the does the book go into detail? Can you give some advice? First, is giving's kind of like a, a muscle that atrophies if you don't use it. So a lot of people, what they think is, I'll clean everything up, so I'll get rid of debt, or I'll, um, you know, get my savings account to a certain level, and then I'll start giving again. Um, but that's kind of like, um, you know, uh, the, the longer you go without giving, the more that muscle atrophies, and then it's very difficult to engage again. Um, so it's like drinking water. I don't know if, so in college, like I, I just was drinking Gatorade and soda and I, I drank, I drank water less and less and less and less. And then, and then I didn't want it, you know, and whenever I, I interact with the homeless, um, like they can't have normal food. They can only have sugar um like they re- literally like healthy food can't they can't digest it and uh and so i think in the same way um the more you give the more you give the less you give the less you give so i i always have that caution it's not about the amount you know so there's if you're receiving something then there's something to give and uh and it's just paul again says it like this he's like it benefits you so you know why do something that it's like drink more water, you'll drink more water, give and you'll give. Um, And so that's one thing. The second thing is there's a simple habit that to engage in um, that starts to change kind of your perspective. And I have this, this, uh, this practice, it's called imprinting. Um, So when money comes uh, towards us, uh, whether it's a a pension check or, um, you know, social security check or paycheck, um, it's coming at us and just like a baby chick, when it's born, it imprints to, uh, to the first thing it sees. So it could imprint and, you know, mother is a cat or mother is a person or mother is a duck and, uh, money wants to imprint. Um, and if the first things it, it sees is your bank account, then it's going to imprint to your kind of personal vaults. And you basically with money, there's something called endowment theory where, uh, once it's, once you feel like it's yours, then it's a part of your person. It's not now kind of like fully attached to who you are. And once their money is there, then it's really difficult to do anything with it other than, you know, what's what you're kind of the carnal person wants to do, <laughs> you know, uh, either accumulate or spend like um, just kind of like the spiritual heart is something that is, um, you know, not natural with money. And so, um, so imprinting proactively. So what you do is you would see money coming before it's been deposited. And then you would walk through your identity of being alive in Christ, dead to sin. And then, and then the steps of this in Romans is you think about how, who you are in Christ, alive in the Christ, dead to the sin. And then as the money's coming, you present both yourself and whatever you're touching as this way, as this new person, and that 
you know, and then, and then it goes into your bank account, but it's been, it's changed that money is now not relating to yourself or to, to the community around you the same way. And so usually you've kind of kept it away from, from imprinting on your heart. And so it's now more available for what Christ might want to do with it. And, and you're going to be more receptive to what, you know, you may pass along some more, or you may keep it for, you know, because, you know, everyone needs, like Paul's like, it's not about people becoming in need from their giving. It's about sharing. And uh, if you have a lot, then supplied those who have little, if you have little, then you're supplied from those who have a lot. So it kind of just lets you kind of keep an open hand <laughs> for, and you'll still spend your money, you know, but you're going to view it not necessarily as yours, but as something you're stewarding. Um, so if you can get into that practice of imprinting, then it just loosens you up a bit, makes everything less painful. And it makes you feel like there's a surplus, even if there's little, there's a mindset. People are either like, oh, everything's scarce or everything's abundant. Mm -hmm. And that's just whether your hand is closed or open. Mm -hmm. Open hand, everything is abundant. Closed hand, everything is scarce. And it's not at all about how much money you have. It's about just your posture because God is a very, very, you know, rich God <laughs> and very and promises provision, promises to take care of us well, you know, 